So I think there are three different views of AGI, or three if you are a German or a Tarantino fan, I guess. But um, the first is that AGI is a tool, something that will transform your industry. Uh, the second is that it's a person, that an AGI would be a person much like us, fundamentally the same. Uh, that's the view of David Deutsch, for instance. Uh, that's his idea. And then thirdly, that it will be a super intelligence. This is sort of the Nick Bostrom type worry. Um, and there are a few points to be, to be made here. Uh, the first is that uh, in the spectrum of tool, fundamentally the same as us and fundamentally different from us, um, there are these boundaries between those three things. So first of all, it's important not to confuse tools with people. Um, to do that in one direction is called slavery, in the other direction is called anthropomorphizing uh, or personifying. And uh, obviously you don't want to subject uh, people to slavery. Um, that's not going to be good for you or them. And if you personify something, anthropomorphize something, you may give it too much control, too much power, uh, that it's not really capable of uh, dealing with very well. You don't want to give your little um, drone access to nuclear codes and not have a person in the loop, uh, things like that. Um, the second th boundary is between people and potential superintelligences. Um, the first question is, is there such a boundary? Is there something that is there a kind of entity that could understand things that we could never understand, do things we could never do, um, think things we could never think? Um, another way to put this question is, are there any limits to human capabilities? Is there any limit to what we can do, think, understand? Um, I think that there is not. That's, uh, again, following David Deutsch here in the Fabric, fabric of Reality and the Beginning of Infinity. Um, but why not? Why is it that we were as a species created 100,000 years ago or so and have made it this far? Is there going to be a stopping point? Um, there are different approaches to answering that question. Uh, I like to think in terms of five things um, that are uh, very much heavily inspired by evolution and that sort of thing. Um, but I think the fundamental question about human capabilities is, uh, are there any limits on knowledge creation, uh, on what we can think um, and how we think? So, like I said, I think of these in, in five different ways. Uh, uh, computation, transformation, um, variation, selection, and attention. So I'll go into those a little bit. Um, first of all, is there any, any limit to what we can compute? And I think the answer is no. Uh, once you have a universal computer, uh, which are now present in our com you know, computers on their desks, as well as washing machines and everything else, uh, then you can compute anything if you have enough time and memory. Um, it seems that we have that, and the aliens or AGIs, if they had that, would have the same repertoire of computations they could do as us. So they have no advantage over us in that respect. Uh, secondly, what about transformations, doing things in the world, you know, making chemical reactions, taking this and turning it into that, um, using your hands to take these raw materials and turn them into different raw, raw materials or into computers or things. Um, it seems that human hands have a, you know, and human bodies overall are capable of doing uh, anything in the right sequence, or I should say, they are capable of doing anything if you put these basic manipulations of like grab this, move it over here, walk over there. Uh, if you assemble those basic operations in the right way, it seems that they're capable of doing anything. Um, we have spaceships, we have space probes that have gone everywhere, we have uh, submersibles in the ocean, we have micro electronic, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, electron telescopes or mic microscopes, I mean, uh, all kinds of things. And none of these maybe can be, many of them can't be directly built by human hands, but human hands can build a thing that then builds that thing. Um, so is there any, any limit to what these basic operations can do when strung together in the right way? Uh, I don't think there is. I think probably a squirrel, if you gave it uh, a human brain or a human teleoperator, uh, could get that squirrel to make a hammer and all the other things that would produce our, our economy. Uh, you, know, you know, first you make the hammer, then you make this, you make that, and by the end you have a spaceship. Um, I think that it doesn't take much to have universality of that kind in terms of the basic building blocks of transformations and physical manipulations of the world. Uh, I think of it very much like uh, the logic gates of, uh, for computers. You know, if you have an AND gate, an OR gate, and a NOT gate, you can assemble those into any kind of uh, Boolean function, any of them. Um, they are a universal set of gates. I think that uh, we have a universal set of basic transformations of reality and they can assemble anything. So if an AGI comes along or an alien, um, it will presumably not have any more capabilities in that respect either. 
in terms of the fundamental set of things it can transform and make. Um, what about the other three things, variation, selection, and attention? These are the more evolutionary kinds of uh, questions, not about what you can compute, not about what you can transform, but about how you produce knowledge, how you navigate the space of ideas, the enormous space of ideas. Um, firstly, variation. This is about coming up with new things. If you don't come up with a new idea, um, if you can't come up with new ideas, then you'll never come up with relativity, say, and that may be very necessary for you to survive. So is there any limitation for us in that respect? I don't think so. I think that we can, first of all, if we wanted to randomly navigate the space of computer programs and we could find eventually uh, any program the same way that uh, a room full of uh, monkey monkeys uh, on typewriters can type Shakespeare with enough time. Uh, of course, that's not good enough. The universe will get cold uh, and all the stars will die before you uh, figure out relativity by that method. Um, so what actually matters is not only that you can navigate the entire space of ideas via universal computation, let's say, and, uh, but that you can do so efficiently. And that means being able to not only move anywhere in that space eventually, but being able to, to take any kind of step in that space. Um, to be able to say, you know, my favorite example is that, um, uh, to, to think in terms of like a, like a desert. You know, if you're in, a, in the middle of a desert, um, some sequence of steps will take you anywhere else in that desert. If you wander randomly, you will probably eventually random, you know, get to any point in that desert. Uh, it may take you a very, very long time, but you could do it. A different question, and the important one here is, could you take any kind of step in that desert? So not only take one step, one, a couple feet in this direction, but could you paraglide over here? Could you take a plane over there? Um, that's a new kind of step that brings new kinds of things uh, efficiently within the, things, the set of things you can reach. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that we have. Uh, we can not only navigate the entire space of ideas, but navigate it in any way. Um, my favorite example uh, is this, like, uh, you know, we, we can build up levels of abstraction, all kinds of new ideas, new concepts, and then just combine them very easily. And my favorite example is uh, this video of uh, Pakistan Goes Metal. Um, a guitarist, he plays metal, he saw a song traditionally from, uh, tr a traditional song from Pakistan, said, let me combine the two, and uh, there you go, he has the great new song. Um, this is just three words, Pakistan goes metal, you know, combining two things, Pakistan metal. Um, so in his head, in a way, it's just a simple operation, combine these two things. And yet, it has all these consequences for all the different instruments that get used, the kinds of rhythms that get used, the kinds of sound production that you use. Um, there's a thousand things that happen underneath that combination, but in some sense it's just combining two things. That's a very interesting and very powerful way to navigate the space of ideas that would not have been available if he didn't have the concept of metal and all the things that entails, and Pakistan and all the things that entails, musically. So we have that capability of navigating the, way, the space of ideas any way we like, and it seems there's no limit on that. Um, so if AGI comes along, it will also have that capability, um, and so will we. We won't be privileged in that respect. Uh, so I've talked about computation, transformation, variation, you know, coming up with new ideas and stuff, and how we do that. Uh, third is selection. If you come up with new ideas, that's not enough. You have to be able to find the good ones and the ones you've created. Um, if you can't do that, then you end up with uh, a situation where it's very hard to make cumulative progress because you have so many things you've created, and then when you create a bunch of new things for each of those, it's very unlikely you will make an improvement at any time, really. But it's very unlikely your improvements will stack up. If you have like one in 10 chance of improving something every time you try to, and then you try to, uh, and then you produce 10 things, one of which is an improvement, and then you try to do 10 things for each of those, one of which is an improvement, only in one of those branches will there be an improvement plus an improvement. And the more steps you go, uh, the more rare cumulative improvements become. So you need to be able to thin out the things that don't work. So that if you try 10 things, you pick the two best ones according to what you think, and then you try to improve those, and you keep doing that. And so you don't have this exponential resource explosion of possibilities that you've tried, most of which uh, suck. Um, so if you want cumulative progress, you need to be able to get rid of all the bad stuff that you come up with in the course of generating new ideas. Um, and again, just like with variation, um, you need to be able to do this in any conceivable way. Because when you come up with new options, you have to compare them. And you have to compare them in some particular way. 
and you might invent a new way to compare two new ideas. And so can humans do that? Apparently so. Uh, do AGIs have any advantage in that respect of being able to come up with new ways of comparing ideas to get rid of the bad ones? I don't think so. So computation, transformation, variation, selection. Lastly, attention. Um, it's no good having lots of ideas if you can't use the right ones in the right situation. Um, I shouldn't say it's no good, um, but it's a lot less efficient. Uh, if you stub your toe, um, the best thing to think about is how to move your toe out of the way of the thing that hit it, or how to move the thing out of the way of your toe. Uh, it's not to think about crocodiles and lizards, which you also happen to know about, but which happen not to be relevant in this case. Um, eventually, if you went through all your ideas, you would probably do something useful, and that's basically what biological evolution does. Uh, but it's very, 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 very inefficient. It'll take a billion years and might do something, whereas uh, we can get to you know, solve the same problems or much harder problems in a couple of decades. That's the difference attention makes. And it seems like we have the ability to, uh, we, we have all sorts of abilities to, to direct our attention in terms of surprise or ideas of things not making sense, confusion. Uh, all of these feelings we have about ideas, uh, that doesn't make sense, that sounds wrong, um, that's interesting. All those direct our ideas and our attention um, in ways that make us more productive and say these ideas in your head and not those ones should be used in this situation to solve this problem. And um, we've already demonstrated we're much, much better than biological evolution. And while if an AGI comes along and has a slightly better form of attention, I think we can do the same thing. We can improve our internal algorithms. So anyway, all this is to say that if you think AGI is a tool, then call it what you want, but I, I think just don't confuse tools with people. That's slavery. And if you think that there's some way of being super intelligent beyond humans uh, that's more than just computing faster or something, I think you need to demonstrate that in one of these five ways. It can compute things that we can't compute. I don't think that's true. Uh, can it do, make transformations of the world that we can't do? I don't think that's true. Uh, can it come up with ideas that we can't come up with? Or can it use ways of generating ideas that we can't? I don't think that's true. Uh, can it compare ideas in a way that we can't compare them? I don't think that's true. And can it uh, direct its attention in ways that we can't? I don't think that's true. So I think in all the five ways that define human power, uh, I don't think there's a way of going beyond us in any way. It seems we have universality in all those respects, that into the trillion year future, uh, we'll keep improving, but the fundamentals of what we are now will stay the same. Um, so anyway, that's my view on AGI, much inspired by David Deutsch, of course. Adios.